Hi, I'm Margo. Between meeting people through events in my own industry or meeting professionals by means of my internship at WAVE, I've had access to some incredible people, including thought leaders and industry pioneers. Throughout this series, Stories Behind Success, we'll be getting a more intimate look into how and why the inspiring guests got to where they are today. A few months ago, my mentor, Julia Haber, gave me the great opportunity to sit down with her grandmother. She's truly a wonderful and strong woman who has defied all odds and learned about the human spirit through an incredible career in psychotherapy. I hope you'll enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Now introducing an inspiration to us all, Miss Helen Haber. I'm 91 in the chronological age, but the spiritual age, much less. Perfect. What's up you guys? I am on the couch with the incredible Helen Haber. She is a psychotherapist and she has been in the industry for how many years? Close to 60 years. 60 years and she is still working full time with how many clients would you say you have currently? Anywhere from 38 to 40 a week. 38 to 40 clients a week. She's incredible. And how many clients do you think you've had over the 60 years? If I could count them, it would be probably in the thousands. Absolutely incredible. So I'm so excited to be able to talk to Helen today. We're going to be talking about your past, your inspirations, how you got to where you are today and the lessons you've learned from your own life and people that you've met. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Let's go for it. Let's do it. <laughs> I would love to know about your upbringing and um, kind of just your background, how you got to this spot. Well, I was raised in Brooklyn when it was a very immigration laden community, mm -hmm. all cultures, and people were very enthused about being here and starting it life anew. My parents were very clued into keeping us focused on getting an education. So I ended up in Brooklyn College with all the best coming back from World War II. If you don't mind me interrupting, sure. what was it about this industry that interested you and made you want to pursue this as a career? I think the uh, background I had with uh, my coming into the world was very unique in that my mother lost a 13-year-old son who is a brilliant pianist and going to be a classical icon at the age of 13 when he passed away from cancer. So she conceived me and I was welcomed with open arms. I was the only girl in the family and was uh, treated in a very special, loving way. And I think I was able to feel that warmth and connection. And I think my feeling was to kind of make a difference in that way brother was not here to represent his area. So I wanted to be something that had meaningful contribution to the world in some way. So I think that really tended me. So that's how it started. And we proceeded with the formalized education for the college. And I was the first New York student in the University of Connecticut School of Social Work. Wow. First one. That is amazing. I graduated from college at age 21. Wow. My master's at 22 I did it in one year oh my goodness and at age 22 I went to Cincinnati Ohio to help sell the Holocaust survivors wow and I was there for two and a half years and experienced what it's like to help people to a terrible tragedy oh my goodness so that's that's my uh, big impact and I think I carried that that the awareness with me in terms of your education, yeah. what was it like going to school at that time, being a woman? I think I got very good support, uh, but it wasn't the same quality of the women's empowerment now. Mm -hmm. I think it was more individualistic right. and motivated. Now you haven't put that good support, right. so it's more of a powerful movement. I was so individualized in my thinking, it didn't bother me about what other people thought. I knew what I wanted. The areas that were very allowable for women were teaching and social work. In those days, you were limited. You couldn't become CEOs. You mentioned that your first job was helping Holocaust survivors, yes. mm -hmm. which is incredible. So mm -hmm. how did that first job and first entrance into the workforce kind of set you up for the rest of your career? Well, it made you feel that you could make such a difference. People highly traumatized that can recapture a certain direction. Work with them to take 
It's a little bit of positive thinking that was there and embrace it and help them build on it. When you were building your family, what was it like working in psychology, having the mindset of understanding how people work and growing a family, mm -hmm. because that's a very unique position as a mother, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you learn from the um, data that you study. There's a new book coming out, which I just ordered, called The Happiness Curve, mm -hmm. which infers that the happiness is a curve. A lot of people are walking around now thinking about, oh, I want to be happy, I want to have everything go well, you know, success and so forth. And the thing to remember is it doesn't come easy. Yeah. You have to be able to tolerate the bumps in the road and be able to know that you can work through them and not necessarily collaborate with other people you wait with, so edify and so build your own confidence, your own good feelings, and be aware of other people. There is such an importance in teamwork. Yes. How does someone build a skill set for good teamwork? Mm -hmm. To be aware of other people's styles. In other words, if somebody is a little bit more powerfully spoken, not to take the bait on that, but to say, I hear what you say, you're making very good content, I'm absorbing that, I think it's very useful in my thinking. But I also want to put forth my thought. It may be different, it may be lighthearted, it may be not to the full measure of what we're doing, but it may have a relevance. Mm -hmm. So can I explore that with you? Do you mind speaking on what you were telling me earlier about how you've met so many different types of people, what mm -hmm. you've learned from that? My growth has been supported and embraced and edified by the people I see. I see people from all over the world and what I find is they help me understand them and their cultures and their style of being so that I'm able to work with them in a very team-like way. The human spirit is the human spirit. All of us are wired in a certain humanistic way. We have common feelings, common hopes, common dreams to embrace that, mm -hmm. to understand that the human spirit is present in everybody. Even if somebody is insulated or controlled, to understand that underneath you may not reach an insulatory, wonderful way you want to, but you may have to reach it in a different format. We're going into these careers, the world is getting more and more diverse complicated. and complicated, which is amazing in mm -hmm. a lot of ways but in a lot of ways it can be confusing to navigate different relationships. So understanding that there is base similarities between everyone I think is so yeah. crucial. There are a lot of family issues coming up now because it's a change in a kind of dehumanization of the personal contact. Twitter and the Facebook and all of that. And a lot of people don't think before they put their thoughts on the Facebook or the, and it's very painful and poisonous to the end. So you have to be aware that you can't just spill out every inkling of feeling that you have. I actually have a few questions about sure. technology for you. Yeah. So you've been seeing people for over 60 years. So you've definitely seen how technology has maybe started to impact people. So mm -hmm. what have been some of the biggest differences that you've been able to see? Well, I think the interpersonal dynamic has something. Couples text each other, they don't talk to each other on the phone, they text each other. And you don't get the same quality, even when people are going on the internet to try to meet others. To understand the flow of emotion between one and another, and to hear it in voice, to hear it in content, it's a little depleted now. How can that tech create a barrier, and how do you think we can overcome that? The problem that's coming up with kids is they're very insulated with the tech. Parents tell me that the kids on the iPhones and the stories and the uh, games and everything, and they're completely into that world. Right. So it becomes very difficult for them to interact and humanize with one another. As I mentioned, a lot of my audience is either thinking about they're going into their full time careers or maybe they have already done that. How would you recommend going about thinking about your career? as an individual, no matter how old you are, but especially for people that are entering the workforce. Well, I think your point is very well taken that sometimes you don't know exactly what's going to work for you. Thinking and processing you have to do, but be patient with yourself mm -hmm. until you find the direction that feels 
right to you. I think we covered all the bases. I think we did. I'm very pleased. Thank you so much. This was amazing. How are you? She's going to be great. I know. You're going to make it with those looks and that face and that manner and that connection. Contrary to what other people think, your parents had a lot to do with them. I right? know they did. It's too bad you couldn't see my house before retro. Well, if you're ever in the area and you meet up, you can come and see it. Perfect. Okay. All right, it's a date. Okay.